Now Lamar starts in the pistol formation with Derrick Henry behind him. Jackson stands five yards deep. He'll give it to Henry. Right side, big hole. Henry across the 20. Oh, he's gone. 30. Leg race, 40. The Kings in midfield and rolling, 40. 30. He, he might. Go. He could. 20, <laughs> 10, 5. He will go all the way. Touchdown, Ravens. And this house is going wild right out of the gates. 87-yard touchdown. Listen to this. W-B-A-L, Jerry Sandusky. On the call, and that was Rod Woodson saying, he gone. Uh, Derrick Henry, 24 carries, 199 yards on the ground. Two touchdowns on the day, including one receiving. They left him in the game at the end to try to get over 200. John Harbaugh loves stuff like that. He, he just couldn't get it. Everything else went right for the Ravens on a night where they win 35-10, to 10, humbling the Buffalo Bills who are at three and one. Ravens dig out of their 0-2 hole. They are two and two on the season. Lamar adds 54 on the ground with a touchdown, was very efficient passing the ball. Nick Shook, Justice Hill gets 78 yards receiving. Yeah, when baby. they brought Nick Derrick Henry to Baltimore, the last two weeks are exactly what they imagine Nick Shook, this Baltimore Ravens offense and their ground game are, are they're just scary right now. Gee, what a surprise. <laughs> the last two games they've won. <laughs> I mean, this is exactly what we what we thought was gonna happen in the offseason, and it took a couple weeks, but they finally figured it out and they look like a machine. And I made the joke last week that I know Greg Roman was coaching for the Chargers because I saw him on TV, but I thought that he was coaching the, the Ravens again because they're just a dominant ground team again. They were good last year on the ground. They are way better on the ground this time around when they get Derrick Henry out loose and in the open field. He doesn't even have to be in the open field. He can run guys over. It doesn't matter. But that mixed with Lamar, Justice Hill, his little scat back, change of pace, catch some passes. It's a tough offense to stop, and I know it's only week four, but... People are probably looking at the Ravens right now and thinking, God, how are we going to defend that, especially late in the year? Yeah, the trademark of Ravens teams, which I really respect their organization more than any other, is throughout the course of the season, they continue to add elements. They figure out what they can do, what they can't do. Their offensive line has had some issues the last uh, couple of weeks, really, to start the season. They're missing one of their starting guards tonight. They have Rosengarten out there at a right tackle. They moved the right tackle to guard. You have... Patrick Ricard out there and they figured out, okay, what works, what doesn't they've really almost created two different rushing attacks. You have the shotgun rushing attack, which has justice Hill more than not. And he had a couple of effective, you know, one effective run tonight, but ends up getting a lot of big uh, gains as a receiver. They really had a touchdown drive, their third touchdown drive, which was keyed by multiple justice Hill catches a 15 yarder on third and 14, a 19 yard touchdown catch. Uh, but otherwise, you got Derrick Henry back there, and it's mostly running out of the pistol and out of under center. And the pistol formation is where they got the touchdown out of. And Jordan Rodriguez, she talked about it on our podcast. A lot more offenses are going to be using the pistol because it's more flexible of how you want to run out of it. And Henry hit that big touchdown out of the pistol, but also had many more successful runs out of the pit pistol uh, formation tonight. It was over 50% success rate. So it wasn't all just about boom or bust with one big run. He had a lot of good chunk runs. Uh, they're figuring out the under center stuff. Like that's been okay. Sometimes it, it hasn't. Otherwise we know what Lamar Jackson can do, which is not even require his wide receivers in a game where they absolutely dominate uh, offensively. They had that long throw to likely, and, and he's a tight end of course, and like Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman almost got a touchdown. Like they're barely involved. Bateman has one catch. Aguilar two for 10. Flowers one for 10. And yet it was one of the most efficient like offensive games of the year. You really felt like the Bills defense, which had been playing well, missed Milano and Teron Johnson and Terrell Bernard. And that's three of their best players. And they should have two of them back pretty soon. Milano won't be back anytime soon. So that's good news for them. But man, this Ravens offense. Okay. Now they've added elements. They figured out how they're going to marry the Derrick Henry running game with the rest of their offense where, where Lamar likes to throw. Yeah. And, and the personnel losses that the bills are dealing with are exactly why it was so hard to defend them because you're going to see other offenses run more of the pistol, which warms my heart as somebody who can think back to the days of the Nevada wolf pack and 
<laughs> Colin Kaepernick and the pistol offense in college football. Now that it's prevalent in the NFL, but this is going to be the team that does it the best because of who they have back there, because they have Henry as a hammer, who's also liable to break off a big play at any moment because they have Lamar who's so hard to predict and defend and can also throw out of that formation and also beat you around the edge. And the way to counter that is to be stout up front, but really it's all about your linebackers and missing those guys mm. in that defense made a huge difference for them, which then in turn makes the Ravens offensive line look that much better when they get to second level and they're able to get to guys that are replacing those usual starters for the bills. So, so uh, not going to be as lopsided, I think, on a week-to-week -week basis, but this is going to be one of the hardest teams to defend out of that formation specifically because they can go in so many different directions. And it all starts with Lamar Jackson, and, and right after him, it's Derrick Henry. Right. So the Lamar's rushing touchdown was such a cool play where, like, the yep. line's going one way and the guards are going the other. And you Lamar, two guys it's, going out right. It's just, yeah. like, so much for defenses to deal with. Uh, you want to settle down all these blitz packages people are sending your way and the bills are not a heavy blitz team anyways, but this is what you do. And yeah, I mentioned, uh, they had 22 plays under center, nine out of pistol. That's out of 54 plays. So way over 50%. The pistol plays 78% success rate had two touchdowns out of it. Not just the Henry play, just really cool stuff out of them. And, they, and they're using heavy formations. I, I looked, they, they barely ever had three receivers on the field tonight. So it's, it's two, Full, you know, it's Ricard and a running back almost, you know, two thirds of the play and it's two tight ends on a lot of the plays, you know, some plays they don't have any receivers on the field, but like, it's crazy that a lot of these plays, they have one receiver on the field and, and yeah, they even went heavy and, and I want to give their defense some love. Josh Allen was pressured on 15 of his 34 dropbacks. I don't think he was like terrible. Tonight, he ends up 16 for 29, 180 yards. There was just like a couple nice plays by the Ravens that got them off the field. One time, uh, McDermott didn't decide to go for it on a fourth and one. It was at his own 39, but they were already down 14-3 at the time. Uh, but it's because they were giving up some penetration. Travis Jones had, had some plays. David Ajabo had a play. And yeah, Josh Allen took some sacks. He's not used to taking a lot of sacks. Got hit quite a bit. So a really encouraging game by, by the Ravens defense, too. Yeah, the penetration was overwhelming in the second half because what essentially happened for the Bills in the final two quarters was Josh Allen got away from the rush one time and made a heroic throw down the sideline for a long completion, and that was it. Every other time that they faced a third down where they knew he had to throw, they would just send the house, and a number of different guys were getting pressure. At one point, Odafe Owe got there and forced him out to the right, and you just see Josh surrounded by like three Ravens who are closing in on him, and he's trying to stiff arm one away, and two more come in to clean it up, and he's just got nowhere to go. And you could see the frustration on him on the sideline. They tried to run a trick play to keep the Ravens off balance. Didn't work out. Turns out into a fumble. Josh gets blasted. Like, everything just snowballed into a nightmarish evening for them. And you know what, Greg? It's crazy because... You look at the Bills where they were a week ago. We did this on Monday night. They <laughs> dominate the Jaguars. They're 3-0. We're talking about how Josh is the best player in the league. But you said something that totally came to fruition tonight. They're going to get tested, and they're probably going to lose before long, and it's probably coming up this week. And we saw it play out exactly as you thought it would. Yeah, I had had the Ravens winning this game. Never, you know, that, it was a coin flip, and never would have thought it would have been like this. But the Bills have won this year by protecting Allen well, didn't play as well tonight and really being able to control the game on the ground. It's not like they ran the ball poorly. They just had a couple short yardage ones early and their defense really lost them the game. The, the matchup that was really the key for me was the Ravens offense in, in this running game, which is one of the stories of this young NFL season. Took a game or two to really get going, but Derrick Henry, very cool to see him just in the open field and busting tackles, making people miss like swerving and really looking young. And it, it really reminds me of those players that get in a second spot. And that's kind of what puts their hall of fame candidacy over the top. I think of Kurt Warner in Arizona. And if, if Derek Henry even has this like one magical year here in Baltimore, even if it was just that one, and who knows like that, that could be enough that that puts him over the top uh, and it's just cool seeing a couple of the greatest players in our game, uh, Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry joining forces. The rest of the league is going to have to deal with that. And the Bills, they'll be back. They'll be fine. It's three and one. Yeah, they're, they'll be fine. they're a little light and a uh, tough matchup for them. I heard John Harbaugh say after the game when he shook hands with McDermott, he's like, hope we see you again. And I was thinking like, yeah, I'll bet you hope you see him again. Like that would be better than <laughs> seeing the Chiefs again. Like you feel like you could handle this team. Good job yeah, tonight, I Chuck. Mean 
<laughs> I'd rather run into the, the team I just obliterated right. at home on, on Sunday night football than the team I can't get past. Yeah, it, absolutely. It's all about the tone of voice. He said it in a nice tone of voice. If he had said yeah, it in no, a very course, smarmy, yeah. sarcastic tone of voice, that would have been like, I hope, I hope we do see you again in the playoffs. We'll see. Long, long, long way to go. 